You're live, Mayor. Thank you. Uh, welcome to the board meeting of the Village of Port Jefferson, Monday, October 19th, our 3.30 business meeting. Um, first order of business. Uh, welcome everybody, hope everybody's well. Good to see everybody on the Zoom. Um, first order of business on the, our agenda is to approve the minutes uh, from our October 5th meeting. Um, in reviewing the minutes, I have uh, mm. identified no amendments or additions or add-ons. Is anybody else any comments? Good from this point. Looks good to Pardon me. me. Good. Good, okay. Thank you, Barbara, for doing a great job for us. Um, we have two administrative uh, action items, numbers two and three, uh, coming from our village administrator, uh, Mr. Joe Palumbo. Uh, first one I love seeing, it's house cleaning, um, disposition of uh, records that we do not have to uh, maintain after a certain uh, scheduled timeline. Uh, so this is to help us uh, keep our files fresh and maintain only those records that we are required to maintain, correct? That is correct. So the New York State Archives had consolidated three or four uh, prior retention schedules into this one, which is the LGS-1 schedule. Uh, and this schedule has been in effect since August of 2020 uh, in order for local governments to utilize this schedule it has to be approved or adopted by uh, the local board in which uh, they want to use it uh, by January 1st of 2021. And that's why it's before you all today for approval. Thank you. Um, so in all practical purposes, I know this is a, an administrative process to get this approved by us, but on a practical level, this gives us the ability, um, I know we're digitizing our records and we just got the IMA in place with the town of uh, Brookhaven effectively. Uh, so we're gonna start scanning. Um, are you? Are there records uh, that you're anticipating uh, bringing to the shredding machine? At this time, I have not reviewed uh, any records for destruction. Uh, okay. we, we try and do our best here as of now to try and, and make everything electronic to the extent that we can. Uh, but obviously going forward, we will certainly be looking at some older records that we have here, as well as over at the country club where we store them and uh, look to start shredding them as soon as possible. Brian, did you want to weigh in on that, Mr. Egan? Oh, that was the, uh, thank you, Mayor. That was, uh, as Joe surmised it, that's exactly right. Every now and again, the New York State Archives update their schedules, clarify certain documents, combine certain titles and, and names as, as, as uh, um, technology advances, such as before, it talked about video recordings. Now the update is just recording. Mm -hmm. Really, just an administrative task. But without the adoption, we can't destroy any documents. So the archive requires us to make this adoption. And just for my record, for the 12 years I've been in service, this is the first time we are adopting such a resolution. So I thank you for cleaning up our our corporate house here. Um, and on that note, we are looking at action item number uh, three. And that is also a uh, human resources requirement for the bloodborne pathogens policy to be adopted by a, this board and for training um, to be put into place for our employees. So Barbara and uh, Joe, I want to thank you for bringing this to our to the board's attention. And uh, if you'd like to add um, any information, we have to ha have scheduled training um, within a certain timeline. Is that correct? That is, that is correct. So we do have some village employees that could be, have exposure to blood board pathogens. Uh, it was uh, recommended by our insurance carrier to adopt a policy. They sent over a template. Uh, I tweaked the template a bit. I sent it to Brian to review. And the final version is before you for adoption today. Uh, we do train our employees on an annual basis. Uh, on blood board pathogens. I believe we have one coming up this month. Uh, right, Barbara? Uh, so that's yes, the annual next week, next week. Um, it is a requirement uh, for members of the board of trustees to attend that training. I do not believe that they do. Not right, the Brian? Born. I don't think so. The sexual harassment. Yes, but not the bloodborne. Right. Okay, so board members uh, there. I think there's training next week. There's three different opportunities scheduled Wednesday and two on Thursday, or but you can check in with Barbara mm -hmm. 
and um, participate. This is a is this a Zoom uh, scheduled training or no. is it in person? It live at the village center. Socially distanced, of course. Correct. Of course, yes. That's why there are three sessions. Okay. Um, each is two hours long, so I guess we have to attend that portion of the training as required. So it may not may not involve an entire two two hour long obligation. Right. We will be discussing three topics at that training session, one of which will be the bloodborne pathogens. Okay. Uh, next topic is the warrants as presented by Treasurer uh, Mordente and just recently hot off the press approved by the internal auditor, Mr. Carlson. Um, Denise, did you have anything in the warrants that kind of jumped out at you that you wanted to discuss with the board? It looks like a no, no, business as so. usual. The general is just high because we have the 83,000 for medical um, and we're paying our second payment for Edmonds, which was 26,000. And then the speed was 10,000, the speed machine. So those are the big items. That's why it looks. No, it's actually, out. it's actually okay. It's a, and I know a lot of that's mandated, so we can't get away from it, but um, yeah. Um, okay. And um, are there any questions? Uh, Rebecca, at our next sort of tete a tete, we will, um, show you how to review the warrants and ask questions appropriately um, and uh, kind of get the budget underneath your nose and see if we can help train you a little bit on the budget. Any, any other board members have any questions on the warrants? Okay. Uh, we're gonna, uh, there, are there any other action items for today? No. Uh, Rebecca, do you have a question, hon? You can speak. Uh, just for clarification regarding the training, I have the training on my calendar for this Wednesday at 11 o'clock. Someone said next week. I just want to clarify that. Sorry, no, it's, I'm sorry. It is this, this week. week. It is this week, right? Wednesday and this Thursday? Wednesday, Thursday, yes. Thank you. Okay, and I, for some reason I just lost my... Can you guys hear me okay? You guys can hear me okay? Yes. Yeah, yeah. Oh, there it is. That was super loud. Okay, hold on. Sorry, just tweaking. All right. Um, so I'll make a motion then to approve uh, items one through four as presented by um, Clerk Sakovich. I'll second that motion. All in favor? Aye. Okay. Uh, board reports, just some uh, items for you folks. I had a, um, a very, very quick. A Zoom meeting with uh, the Orsted uh, representative, um, a good mayor from former mayor of Greenport. Uh, Barbara, help me. His name is David Capel. Capel. Thank you, guys. Dave Capel, my brain is like so full. Um, Orsted has disclosed, I think you may have seen a press release or uh, an article in the newspaper that they have purchased an upland property up on, um, I think it's Bellmead Road up off of Upper Sheep Pasture Road. Um, and I think it's a, a large building. I think it's a, a 50,000 square foot building or something very large. Um, in addition to housing the warehouse and their offices, um, this facility is giving them the ability to also um, partner with Suffolk County Community College in providing a, a training facility. Um, and it'll be a... Um, the first of its kind in the world um, to train on building propeller systems, everything that have to do with building and maintaining wind turbine systems from the technology to maintenance. There's even, they'll even be training on height, um, managing height and uh, you know a whole bunch of things. So I think that that's a really great win-win that um, you know, they secured their building, they've closed on that building, uh, they own it and uh, they're making some headway into um, bringing this project to fruition um, for the, uh, you know, all of Long Island to benefit from 800 megawatt of wind power. Um, they are making strides on uh, finalizing uh, some long-term lease agreements um, at the pier uh, so that their vessel uh, can have an appropriate uh, dispatching uh, location. And uh, we'll hear some further uh, updates on that as uh, they are willing to disclose to us. So that's all good news. Um, just wanted to, for the benefit of the general public, make a statement with respect to some of the issues that have been 
uh, confronting us here down in the village and um, in particular this past weekend. And I wanna thank everybody for expressing their concerns about the recent activities. Um, and I want to re-emphasize that the village of Port Jefferson does not in any way condone lawless or disrespectful behavior uh, within our village, regardless of any content or messaging that a person or group is attempting to convey. Um, the incidents of this past weekend took place uh, without approval uh, from the village of Port Jefferson. Um, and once the uh, village was aware of the uh, events uh, ongoing, uh, we immediately coordinated with uh, Suffolk County Police uh, who were here to assist um, as they have the authority to enforce uh, the state's mandated social distancing and face covering mandates, as well as the uh, authority to issue tickets for traffic and any kind of moving violations. Uh, Suffolk was on location to ensure the uh, safety of the public as well as our code enforcement bureau. Um, and it was a difficult situation, but I think uh, given the circumstances and the climate that we are undergoing here in our country, um, in just about every nook and cranny. Um, I wanna commend them for keeping a, what could have been a very volatile situation um, under con somewhat under control. Um, we are gonna have continued discussions and continue to coordinate with uh, Kara Han's office, um, the offices of Suffolk County Police and uh, perhaps even the district attorney's office to um, ensure that uh, the public remains in safe hands um, and uh, we're hoping that as each day ticks off the calendar here, that we may return, return to somewhat of a uh, is existence of peaceful and quiet enjoyment in our community here. Um, it is not anything that we any of us condone, and we are not complicit. And um, I just wanted to uh, let everybody know that uh, it, was a, it was a tough day for all of us here in the village. Um, on that note, I'd like to return back to business at hand and report to the board that I had a meeting with the rinks organization. Um, it is our plan, so long as the state allows outdoor skating to continue to be an approved uh, athletic activity or program, it is our intention of allowing the rinks to set up the ice skating rink here in the village of Port Jefferson and maintain social distancing and uh, purchase of tickets ahead of time on Eventbrite, uh, making sure that everyone who enters our building must be wearing a face covering and that will be strictly enforced. Uh, and also when you're on the ice, you must be continue to wear your face covering. Um, we're looking at reducing the numbers to keep everybody um, obviously safe while we enjoy a hopefully a normal outdoor activity and a, an event that our families can come down here and enjoy safely in the village. Um, so the rinks are our full partner in providing that program. And uh, we look forward to uh, having that program uh, ongoing here as a, as a welcome tradition um, and during our holiday season and into the winter. Uh, we could all use some outdoor activity and a, a recreational uh, experience that families can uh, anticipate coming down here and doing together without having to worry about um, you know, being safe or um, any undue uh, pressure. So with that, um, concludes my report. I'm sure there's other aspects of your reports that I might jump into. Um, but with that, I want to pass the baton to Deputy Mayor and Trustee Laux. And if you could unmute your microphone, Stan. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, just to expand a little bit upon the, uh, the skating. Uh, skating is an outdoor activity. Uh, we've We've had golf, we've had tennis all summer. We've been very fortunate up there running those programs. And I'm sure that if skating does take place, which I'm pretty sure it will, uh, if we continue along the guidelines that have been passed down to us with the face masks, social distancing, uh, we're looking for a, a very healthy winter with the uh, opening of the rinks. Uh, Along those lines, we have opened the center. Uh, the center is now uh, open on all three floors. It's modified. Uh, we're following all of the COVID guidelines. 
Uh, we have purchased a, a handheld sanitizer that uh, we will be using after the use of each room. If a room is used, we sanitize the room prior to it being used again. Uh, we're still running the adult fitness programs at the center. Uh, going along with the, new, with the opening, we uh, right now have a new art exhibit that's up on the second floor at the center. Uh, we have to limit the number of people that go up there at any one time, but it is a very interesting display that uh, I would invite anyone to go up and look at it. The farmer's market is still outdoors at the Harborfront Park, and we will be staying outdoors uh, until the weather turns us in. Uh, from the recreation department, uh, I announced this earlier on, but uh, this, the Spring Street School is not going to be available for our recreation programs for the fall and winter seasons. Uh, that's a little unfortunate because we did uh, rely upon those, uh, that gymnasium over there to run a lot of our programs. Uh, the sports court, uh, again, going back to the rinks, it has been totally dismantled. Uh, we will be preparing for the rinks to open, we hope, in November. Uh, I want to send out a reminder to all of those people who have vessels, uh, that's kayaks, canoes, paddle boards that are on our village racks. Uh, you should be preparing to get those vessels removed sometime during the month of November. Uh, we'd like them all off the racks by the end of the month, the end of the month of November. Uh, some news from the country club. Uh, the tennis season will end November 1st. Uh, we've extended it two weeks this year because of our late opening. Plus the weather has been very conducive. So uh, you can play tennis up until November 1st. The golf course, if uh, Mother Nature allows us, we're going to stay open till December 31st. Uh, one more reminder to all country club members about their minimum cards. Uh, your minimum cards are due to be used by December 31st. Uh, this does not pertain to the new members who came in on the early bird program. Uh, your minimum cards will be good until December 31st, uh, the year 2021. And that concludes my report. Thank you. Mayor on mute, please. This is a little convoluted, but when I was on the school board, I managed to secure uh, a lease with BOCES uh, for that building that got the building rehabilitated and uh, eventually wound up with substantial revenue for the school district. Uh, for some reason, that revenue has decreased. BOCES doesn't run any evening programs. Why, why are we not able to use that in the evening? I only know that the school has told us we have not, we don't have the ability to get into that gymnasium. Maybe Kathy Ann can explore this with the school, find out what's going on. Are they running programs in there? I can ask. I don't believe the school is using it for their programs. Um, right now, um, sports has been delayed until um, a few months from now. We have started with um, preseason workouts, but as far as I know, that's all on school property. Um, but I can certainly ask about that. Um, who did you, you spoke to um, somebody no, else? Well, Renee spoke with the school and the school informed Renee that we would not have use of the Spring Street School for the fall and winter months. She spoke to the, the Port Jeff School or Spring Street School? I believe Port Jeff. Okay. I can ask. So ba basically, we had um, been using that for decades now. Yes. And uh, I don't know if uh, this is a diminution in our rights through the contract that we have with them. I, I'm 
just wondering how they can just say, okay, you can't use this anymore. And Bruce, I'm sure it has something to do with COVID. So I don't think it's a bright line in the sand saying you yeah. guys can't use this facility forever in the future. I think it's a COVID issue. We'll clarify. I don't think it's a, anything other than that, but we'll clarify. You can proceed with your report, Bruce. Oh, okay. Uh, I, I had um, asked late, uh, I wanted to get some more discussion regarding the Patriots group. Um, uh, my understanding is that they have a, um, a demonstration planned for Tuesday when they're supposed to um, uh, pay the summons that was issued to them. Uh, basically, uh, you, we had coordinated according to the mayor's report with the uh, Suffolk County um, PD. Uh, were any traffic uh, summonses issued or anything like that for this uh, march that was uh, not sanctioned by the village? I'm not aware of any Get that information. I haven't gotten any information. I, I, I'm not aware of any violations that were uh, that were from this most recent event. And with regard to the ticket that was that was pending for uh, Wednesday, you know, that was a that was a prior event with regard to an aborted permit. And only because that's in active prosecution before the village justice court, we might not want to talk about that too much until uh, we make our case in justice court. Well, I'm not talking about that the particular summons, but uh, related to this is the fact that I understand that they're bringing a large group down to protest uh, the fact that they were summoned. Yeah, we, we are aware of that and the um, <clears throat> intelligence division of the Suffolk Police Department is also aware. Yes, and, we're, and, and you can speak with the village prosecutor after the meeting and the village administrator for the precautions that are in place to protect those that are coming to court peacefully. All right, thank you. Kathy Ann Snaden, Trustee Snaden, moving on. Yes, um, I had a meeting with uh, the ARC this morning. It was uh, my second meeting in the last few weeks. Um, as I mentioned in the, our, my last board meeting that they wanna become more involved and uh, do more for, for the village. So we have had these regular meetings set up and um, after speaking with them, I did speak with Allison at the um, building department. And one of the things that um, she would like us to do um, with the ARC is to review the comp plan and uh, look at updating the design guidelines that have not been updated since 2001. Um, so those are, for those that don't know, the guidelines that um, are given out to uh, any prospective builders um, at, at the um, onset of the permitting process, um, but they are, are clearly outdated. So that's something we're, we're going to take a look at, um, reconvene, and, and see what we can do with that. Um, and the only other thing I have to report on is we had another uh, meeting with the school for the prom. Um, they are pushing to have the prom at the school location, but they are still keeping it open that they may come to us as a request um, to use village property. Um, it's kind of a moving target at this point, but um, I just wanna keep that out there for you guys in case that does come to us as, a, as an ask later on. Um, so that's it for my report for today. Thanks, Kathy Ann. Uh, Rebecca? Thank you. Um, okay, so on my agenda. All right, uh, so the bluff stabilization update, um, I've been in touch with GEI, uh, who's the engineering firm who's been working on the plan uh, to stabilize the bluff that is uh, at east beach west of where one would drive down, um, where as anyone who visits East Beach knows exactly the block we're talking about. Um, the, uh, the plan is, has been uh, going through rough waters as you would uh, with the um, meeting DEC, uh, DOS, and Army Corps of Engineer uh, hiccups along the way. Um, there are conflicting uh, needs between uh, you know, the, so the, the village and um, the country club wanting the bluff completely stabilized 
and uh, DEC and DOS, uh, who has a, um, you know, their, their stance is to let the bluff erode um, because that is what bluff naturally do. And so um, while we would like to fully stabilize the bluff and keep the uh, country club from uh, getting closer to the edge or the edge getting closer to the country club actually, um, it is uh, against the will of the uh, DEC and DOS to allow such to happen. And so um, at this point, uh, what we're looking at is uh, getting the, uh, the most robust plan possible for uh, stabilization, which is really what we're looking at is a, um, we're buying time, but we're not buying a lot of time. And so we're going to get the best uh, plan possible, again, the most robust stabilization plan that the DEC and DOS will allow to move through. Um, uh, and I trust, you know, it, this plan has been in the works for over four years. I've experienced looking at these things uh, and working with these organizations. And um, so we're going to uh, get that through, bid it out, and then at that point, um, look at the sort of cost benefit analysis and see what um, see what we're, we're going to look at moving forward. So we do expect um, that to all sort of start to move more quickly. Uh, we do have an update that uh, some uh, over the course of November, probably give or take, we're going to be seeing sand from somewhere in Stony Brook. Uh, the Stony Brook dredging project needed sand uh, placed somewhere, and it is being placed in that area on uh, East Beach, uh, the area of concern, which does uh, in and of itself uh, help the stabilization of the beach just by placing sand at the foot of um, the, the cliff. And so that's really good news for us just in the short term. Um, there's another dredging project uh, where we you know, might be getting sand as well. So um, overall, there's movement there uh, and we will see and uh, as, as a whole village decide what is to become the fate of that area um, within the village's control because there are higher powers. Um, so that's the update there. Um, as far as uh, the uh, sculpture. That, sorry, should, does anyone have thoughts or questions about that? No, oh, my only my only comment, Rebecca, is moving forward. I'm going to suggest that you get a pair of earbuds and a because you you have oh, earbuds. I have one. I think I have the microphone tucked behind you. Though. Hold on. Yeah, because you're you, you're you're coming across just a tad bit muffled. But is this I was better? Able to Thank you. Much she better. is. Could That's you? Much yeah. much okay. Better. Sorry. Thank you. That's I okay. guess my. Uh, mouth is in the front of me and not in my neck. That makes sense. <laughs> yes. Um, very good. Okay. Thank you for, for the note. All right. Um, well, long and the short of it is uh, more news on the bluff stabilization soon, but it's moving and it's not uh, the best case scenario, but we will figure something out. Um, and it's moving and it's moving and there's no pun intended in that. I'm kidding. <laughs> Keep going. Sculptures. I owe, Let's I hear owe about the sculpture. Puns. Um, okay, so the sculpture, um, we are looking uh, today is the deadline for uh, the sculpture project that the village is engaging in, um, in conjunction with Stony Brook University. We're um, expecting to receive uh, sculpture designs from um, the undergraduates and, grad and MFA students at Stony Brook University for an interactive sculpture that will um, uh, educate and, and uh, empower more people to recycle uh, and, and know more about the ecology of the area and the impact that we have um, you know, through uh, inspiring them with art and having a, a practical way to, um, to make change. So um, I will, at the next meeting, uh, hopefully be able to present to you our uh, finalists and uh, discuss moving forward there, but we're excited to um, and grateful to um, uh, you know, different folks there at Stony Brook for really helping this project move along. Um, the planning board, uh, I got to go to my first planning board meeting, uh, which is very exciting. Um, the, uh, of course, uh, the 1615 main project, which is the biggest uh, project on everyone's mind, which is the um, Station Street uh, building there uh, in Upper Port. Um, the biggest upshot there is uh, to bring back to the Board of Trustees is that uh, we will have the Parkland fee discussion coming our way. Um, you know, there's a, a Parkland fee uh, associated with uh, all you know, large uh, apartment projects. And so um, the, it sounds like they would like to not pay the Parkland fee. 
um, based on comments um, you know, from builders. And uh, so as uh, that is what I am reporting is that this is something that we will soon have to uh, discuss as the Board of Trustees. Um, and so uh, otherwise, um, uh, the only part of discussion about that at the Planning Board at this point was talking about the landscaping between Station Street itself and the parking lot, and possibly instead of having stamped concrete uh, with tree pits, just doing a continuous line of uh, sort of trees or hedges, um, which the Planning Board seemed to be in favor of. Um, 116 West Broadway is the, the uh, project down the new ferry uh, building going in there, um, got zoning board approved. So that uh, sounded like it was getting kicked to the ARC and um, would be looking at uh, it as part of perhaps a bigger Port Jeff uh, Bridgeport ferry office project, um, which also sounded very interesting. Um, there's a project up at 170 North Country um, it's a medical building, and then uh, at uh, 216B Main, which was the uh, Old Say Cheese, uh, there is artisanal pet food um, uh, store and uh, artisanal manufacturing, as our code uh, calls it going in, uh, which is to say that they will be making small batches mm -hmm. of dog food uh, and have a small um, uh, storefront for people to go in but I don't think humans or dogs are allowed to eat the food in the shop itself. So that is, uh, that's what's being, um, you know, the change of use or conditional permit was being looked at there. So that is what's going on at the planning board. And Very good. Uh, lastly, the CAC update. Um, uh, I have not gotten to meet with the CAC. Uh, that is happening later this week. Uh, and so looking forward to that, but they sent me um, a really uh, wonderful update of what they've been working on, what they'd like to be working on, and uh, much like the ARC, are interested in, in being engaged with uh, more projects in the village, uh, having sort of a clearer um, uh, sense of you know when to be brought in and and what to be working on. And so I'm looking forward to working as their liaison and um, uh, I've uh, you know reaching out to others in in the village to maybe create a, a rubric or, or uh, documentation to make a standard of when these uh, community, um, these, these resident uh, volunteer committees, um, you know, do engage in projects because we do really value our residents' time when they volunteer uh, their expertise and time to, to these projects. And we want to uh, you know, just make sure everybody's sort of on, you know, seeing clearly what's, uh, you know, what, what the pathway is to, to making their voices heard. And that's that. Nice report. Thank you so much. Um, <clears throat> you've been a little busy. Uh, Mr. Egan, Attorney Egan, anything to report to us today? Thank you. No formal report today, Mayor. Thank you. And Administrator Palumbo, anything to report to us? Got to plug your headphones into the computer. Can you hear me? We can now, yes. I, had, I was on double mute, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the only thing I have to report uh, today is um, I walked over to the Barnum lot uh, this afternoon. Uh, I usually stop by there a few times a week just to take a look at the progress. Uh, the The shape of the actual lot is, is really uh, coming along uh, these days. I asked uh, FNF today when they thought they were going to be laying the asphalt, and they said probably in about three weeks. I know they're working on the bile swells uh, that are going to run along uh, Barnum itself. Uh, the drainage is, is installed there. Uh, the, the topsoil will be brought in uh, to, to form those bile swells there as well. Uh, I spoke to FNF about the, the modification that we're going to be making with respect to the buffer that separates the parking lot and uh, Caroline Avenue there. Uh, so they have that in hand. Uh, I discussed that with uh, Karen and, and Lisa uh, at the building department as well. So I think we have a, a pretty good plan uh, with uh, the, the change in shrubs and trees that will be going there and the potential of uh, installing a five foot wood stockade fence that would run along uh, the parking lot on the south side uh, 
of the parking lot between uh, Caroline and the, the parking lot itself. So Joe, just a point of clarification, I'd like to see that buffer be green. And the only caveat is if the, the, the plantings are you know, not robust enough in their early stage, the stockade fence is just to protect the residents from getting headlights at this point in time. It's not Correct. something Correct. that we want to see as a long-term plan. So the, the first goal is to get enough plantings in place. Correct. Correct. Right. Okay. So there, the, the plantings themselves will be, in, will be installed in the five, six uh, foot range in terms of height. And they will be um, separated by at least eight feet because these plantings will grow to by between 20 and 40 feet in height eventually after you know two three four seasons and they will also come together as well so there may be some some gaps in the in the beginning we'll try to prevent as many as possible in the event that and also there will be some underlying shrubbery as well uh, to make it much more robust and natural looking which is what we're looking for and what was looking for from the start uh, in the event that there is some gaps in, initially we, we will look at putting at putting in a, a five foot wood stockade fence to, to make sure that the headlights stay within the parking lot itself and not intrude on any neighbors in the area. Okay. Just a, a thought in case um, to head off any upset about the, uh, if there is about a stockade fence, which might be up for- uh, a, She's a coming year. in muffled. Could you do- Am I still coming in muffled? Yeah. Go ahead. Let me- is that it? Yeah. Oh, see, this is without headphones at all. Um, taking the gloves off. Uh, just uh, to, to head off any um, uh, upset about the stockade fence, and an idea might be to uh, do one of these lovely murals on the stockade fence, uh, if that might make it- uh, on, the face, on the side facing the public, right? Facing the public, absolutely. Um, it just, just an idea to put out there. They've been really well received um, by, by the public, I think, and uh, if the idea of a stockade fence is, uh, yeah, at all distasteful. Right. That's that's. I think that could be a an option for consideration. It was also discussion uh, with some of the folks in planning about uh, uh, planting some um, plantings that can actually creep up onto the wood fence, so as to not show the wood itself, and it'll create a a green Pre wall of some kind. Was the wood okay. fence something that the neighbors had requested? No, planning. Maybe we should talk to the neighbors before putting up a fence because I believe oh. that any discussions or meetings were talking about greenery and, and you know. No, so right. so the, fence, still... the fence is gonna come after we do the plantings and the plantings are complete to see how it looks initially. And then we can go ahead if we have to and install the, the fence. So Kathy, and just so the, cause the, the plantings have to be planted so they're not on top of each other. So there's room for them to grow. So it might leave gaps at the, you know, the tree line, the baseline. And there, there we did get one of the neighbors or the residents across the street concerned about getting headlights. So, you know, we are just saying, we'll put up a fence. We'll create, we're gonna create as much of a green barrier as we can but the plant, the trees that are coming have to be distanced apart so they can grow in. So we're trying to think of like either an underbrush or something, you know, and a stockade fence is a temporary sort Correct. of uh, fix just until the, everything grows in. But again, we have, we are in communication. Joe was in the field the other day with one of the neighbors uh, who actually happens to be in the, uh, um, Joe, were you able to contact Peter? I did not get in touch with him as of yet. I have his card right here. Okay. He's uh, he's actually in the landscaping business. He's actually going to be occupying um, the uh, white building on the corner of, gosh, I don't know. It's on Caroline. And I don't know the little road that goes up to connect to, um, I think Oaks. it's, uh, Oaks. pardon me? The one that connects to Oaks. Yeah. It's a little tiny street. He's going to be living in that house on the corner. So he he's reached out to us and we're trying going to be meeting with him on site. And yeah, I just want to comment. I do. I just wanted to finish and say that you know I'd prefer to see more underplantings, smaller shrubs, things like that that can later be moved somewhere else if necessary. I'm just not a fan of a stockade fence at all. I agree. I agree. 
If any, it, again, it, it would be a temporary solution, whether it's there for a season or two. Right, understood. Wait, right. Yeah, it's a, it's going to be a work in progress. Uh, Robert, Bruce? Well, I'm kind of in agreement with Kathy Ann there. I, I would at least suggest you talk to the neighbors, A, and B, a stockade fence uh, is, is going to in, impede the growth of uh, any vegetation that you have near it. It's going to shield it from light. So that, that might be a problem in and of itself. Again, I think the stockade fence is just a, a suggestion if we need to help prevent the headlights initially, you know, becoming a problem in the event we cannot, you know, plant enough shrubbery. Stan, did you want to say something? Yes, I just... Uh... What is the width of that buffer? I uh, don't know off the top of my head what it is. So you have you have curb line, a small a small amount of green, new sidewalk which has been poured, and then an additional buffer before you get to the curb line of the parking lot. Right. And I I think it's 16, 17 feet maybe. I I was just. Uh, I planted a buffer on my property and they stagger the trees. Yep. Like you, you put them 10 feet apart, but then in the middle, back another five feet, you put another tree. It, yeah. Uh, it eliminates those openings. Right. Well, so I that... know, but, but you still have the guys, you still have the trunk of the tree. You can stagger, but you're still going to have the trunk of the tree. So we're looking at planting some underbrush as Kathy Ann suggested. Trust me, we want we yeah. want a green wall. What we're trying to say is, if we can't effectively get a green wall in because the trees are young and do need to be spread apart, we're looking to either plant something that can be, be you know give the neighbors plenty of buffer, or last resort to prevent headlights from shining Correct. into their household is the stockade fence. Right. We're talking. But, you know, so we're Stan, talking they will, ever, we're talking evergreens. I hope. Yes. Correct. Yeah. So they they will be staggered. They'll be two behind kind of in a triangle configuration Correct. two behind one in the front two behind one in the front going along the entire way to try and close up any hole that may exist what about right. um and i don't know visually the the width and how big these trees are or what they're thinking about but maybe there'd be a, a, a row that would be ad directly adjacent to the parking lot so on the inside of the row of evergreens where you could put like a a solid row of boxwoods that makes basically a green wall that would be inside closest to the parking lot that would block any headlights. And then on the outside closest to the street would be then the tall evergreens and whatever um, way you'd want to put them. Right. So uh, uh, we can certainly re revisit that with planning, but uh, planning gave the go ahead with uh, this, this new setup and design and the selection of trees uh, and what they were looking for. So I think putting in an additional row may also impede the growth of what they would like to see put there uh, because they ultimately will be 20 to 30 feet in height and a pretty significant width. So adding an additional row, at least initially, may not work out in the long run. So if we needed to put a fence up temporarily and, and take it down once everything is grown in, or those small areas that may be open initially are, are, are filled in, that may be the best bet. But, you know, we can, we're running around, we're running out of time in terms of uh, planting and, and this project. So we need to finalize this. Uh, but I, again, I think uh, planning was okay with uh, the, the new setup and new design. So, I, you know, the only thing I can recommend is to proceed and get the, the large plants planted in the staggered format. They are evergreens and different types of er evergreens as selected by not only the building and planning department in the planning process, but by the contractor and also our master gardener is on site weighing in on this. Um, so I think what we're, and, and once we have an assessment of how it, how it looks, then we can either plant something else or right. move on. But I, I, I agree with Joe, our window of planting is, is closing on us. Um, but our first priority is to provide as much green buffer as we possibly can. I even, and not to beat this matter into the ground any further, no pun intended again, even just discuss creeping holly bushes right? <laughs> last week. So <laughs> we're kind of all over the place with this. 
But at any rate, um, Joe, anything else? That's it. Um, our clerk, uh, I'm sorry, Treasurer Mordente, anything else on the budget or anything coming along? How's the new software working out aside from this morning? Everything's going well. Um, the only thing is Friday we had our closing for our band. So we have our money for our capital projects. Um, and as you know, we Excellent. Oh, sorry, we just, um, and that's we just really lost, it that's going on. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, we just lost we just lost you on that last bit. Can you repeat that? Oh, about the band that um we got the money in, um, we closed on Friday, and then we got the 0.56 percent interest rate that you guys know about already. Woo. So borrowing money over the long run for 0.56. That's wonderful. Thank you, Denise, for that and working with yeah. Bond Council. Please thank them as well. They did an excellent job on behalf of the village. Credit rate. Credit rating is Absolutely. is still is still very good here in the village of Port Jefferson. Yes, Mr. Miller. Is there, uh, Denise, is there any possibility of paying off uh, previous bonds with this low interest rate? Can we did refinance. Uh, we did the refinance last year. We we did that already. We we refinanced everything yeah, last year. The two bonds oh, we had. But it's still lower this year than it was last year, right? Point five six. Uh, much i think we got a great rate last year so all right and then we did the new bond in august that we just did that we got one percent 1.1 okay um clerk sakovich barb uh hi there um we already mentioned about the uh, employee training taking place this week our, our winter farmers market i'm working with melissa and all of the vendors for the winter farmers market to continue with a combination of inside at the village center, socially distanced and some outside vendors. Um, and then we would just manage the flow of who enters um, the farmers market. So we're working on that now. Uh, we're partnering with the um, Chamber of Commerce to have a festival of trees. Um, again, add a little holiday cheer for everyone. And again, we would manage the crowds um, on that as well. We're working on our, our holiday events uh, sprinkle of holiday cheer for the Saturdays in December. And I'm working with the, um, the restaurants for whoever wants to continue their outdoor dining, uh, under their tents. That's yeah. So basically, uh, Barb, the outdoor dining, um, I think the original permit was good through, is it November? November one. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, um, as long as they're keeping both, they need to have two sides open for ventilation of the tent. Correct. And, and they, they need a compliant uh, heater that right. the and, should inspect. Right. So anybody who's considering that, um, just, you know, put, give us a holler now so we can get you uh, set up and uh, have a, an inspection prior to November 1st. We, our goal is to keep you up and running as long as we possibly can. Correct. Um, we do have. I have a question two... for Barbara. Yeah. Yes. Sorry. Um, that's okay. I was approached by the fifth grade committee um, at the school district. They wanted to do a fundraising event um, sometime in December, but didn't want to um, um, compete with anything that is happening on the weekends um, for our mini Dickens weekends. So is when you get that schedule, Barb, would you mind passing that along as to what's happening when? I will. I'm finalizing it with the Arts Council now. It's definitely the 5th, the 12th, and the 19th. The hours are approximately one to four for events, but I, it, I will finalize that soon. Okay, great, thank you. You're welcome. Yeah, and, and, and Kathy, and depending on what they want to do, I mean, they might be able to fold into, you right. know, one of those one of those days so that they're going to get the benefit of having it somebody, in addition yeah. to the general public. Yeah. So yeah, when I look at those and see what they are, then you know maybe that's an idea. Okay. Um, you know, and again, with, uh, with Dickens and having to postpone the 25th <coughs> silver, silver anniversary, um, yeah, I hope everybody appreciates and understands that many of the venues where the events take place are churches, um, where congregation are vo strictly volunteer, um, to hold the events. And, um, basically we don't want to put anybody in the village in harm's way or, you know, uh, you know, so basically we, we reached out to all of those different venues and, um, you know, everybody's feeling was to pretty much, you know, they were lucky to have uh, their services open for uh, Sunday mass. And we didn't want to do anything that was going to be disruptive to the, to the churches or their ability to perform, uh, you know, their, their services as is. Um, and also the uh, village uh, Dickens committee and the arts council 
again, volunteers, uh, many are seniors and our seniors are uh, of course at the higher risk population. So, you know, that was partially why we decided to postpone our uh, the annual Dickens celebrations. So um, with that, I, I do need to hold our board members back and I do need to hold, uh, I'd like to hold the treasurer back and attorney Egan back for an exec session. Uh, of course, with Joe, Joe, uh, Administrator Palumbo and, and Clerk Sakovich. Uh, Stan, are you going to raise your hand? And you're on mute. Can you unmute, please? Kevin keeps doing that to me. Uh, next meeting date? November 2nd, 7 p.m. And Barbara, you're on mute as oh, well. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. 7 p.m., November 2nd, public meeting. Thank you. Okay, with that, I'm gonna make a motion to go into exec session at 424 to talk about uh, two employee matters and a uh, negotiation matter. Second that motion. So moved. All in favor? 